A uh, brief disclaimer before we start the video, yes I know that part 3 is coming out before part 2, just pretend that part 2 is already out, I don't have the gas giants modeled yet, so I can't do part 2 yet. Anyway, enjoy the video. Also, um, there was a segment here where I showed you the map, but some guy wanted me to remove it because they don't want people to figure out where I live because the names aren't blurred out in that map. So, uh, yeah, and enjoy listening to me talking, I guess. Hi, welcome to here. This is the TNO episode of my solar system thing, and I'm gonna show you the first TNO, or the first large TNO, this. Uh, it's called Orcus. A little bit smaller than the series. And it has one moon called Vant. Um, and Orcus has a very similar orbit to another much more famous trans-Neptunian object called Pluto. And it's sometimes called the anti-Pluto because their orbits are perpendicular to each other. Speaking of Pluto, I am standing at this beautiful gas station. Uh, there are quite a lot of cars going by, so I had to film inside of one. But anyways, even for the largest of trans-Neptunian objects, Pluto is only about half the size of Mercury, and at this scale, about the size of a quarter. Uh, it has five moons, but Charon is by far the largest, and it's so large that they actually orbit around each other, like sort of a binary dwarf planet system. Now, Pluto was discovered in 1930 by Clyde Tombaugh, and for, the, for a while, it was considered the ninth planet of the solar system. But, uh, as telescopes improved, scientists dis uh, started to discover a lot of objects similar to Pluto orbiting in the same region. Uh, now, Pluto was still the largest object, but in 2005, scientists discovered another object called Eris, which I will talk about later, that was, that was more massive than Pluto, and so they decided that Pluto, that they needed to come up with an official definition for a planet. Um, it needs to directly orbit the sun and have enough mass to be round in shape and clear other objects from its orbit. And of course, Pluto didn't fit that definition, so it was demoted to a dwarf planet which sparked mass outrage that continues to this day. Um, since we're outside of Pluto's orbit, now is about as good a time as ever to talk about the heliopause. The heliopause is a boundary, um, is a boundary outside of Neptune's orbit where the sun's solar wind collides with the solar wind of other stars. And it's considered t t by many people to be the edge of the solar system and the beginning of interstellar space. But there are more objects that orbit the sun beyond this boundary, which we will travel to now. A little further down the road, and we encounter another trans-Neptunian object, Salacia. This one's a lot smaller than some of the other things, but, um, and I know I forgot to include some other things like Runa, Varda, Ixion, Chaos, or however you pronounce this, but Salacia is bigger than all of them, so I went with that. It has, and it has one moon called Actea, and it is 
quite small. You can like barely see it here. Anyways, let's move on to the next transneptunian object. Welcome to Haumea, the egg-shaped dwarf planet. This is what Haumea looks like, and it also it is the only dwarf planet known to have a ring around it. That's pretty neat. And it has two moons. The smaller inner one is called Namaka, which is too small to show here, but the larger outer one is called Hiaka, which orbits out around here. This little object is called Kwawar. And it has one moon called Waywat. It is quite small, too small to show here. Um, and scientists think that Quawar is moderately red in color, looking, looking a little bit purple. Welcome to stop six out of nine on our journey. And we have another somewhat major object called Maki Maki. It is very red in color, and it has one moon, nicknamed MK2, but unfortunately it is too small to be shown here. Now, the, there are some more trans-Neptunian objects further over a little ways. But, um, they're gonna take a little longer to get there than some of the others that are quite close together. So, I am just going to use my goofy teleportation method. <gasps> ah! Uh, uh. Can we get a royalty-free gong sound effect, please? Huh? Why? Because it's time to learn about Gong Gong. Why can you choose a site? This is Gong Gong. It's also red in color. A lot of these things are red. Um, it's because of a chemical called tholins, and it's from solar wind interacting with ethane. And Gong Gong has one little moon called Jiang Liu. Now, for the longest time, for a while, this dwarf planet, Gong Gong, was called 2007-OR10, a provisional designation, and it was the largest object without a name, but in 2020, um, there was a vote on what to name it, and they decided to name it Gong Gong. So, I mentioned earlier that Orcus and Pluto were sort of like orbital twins. They have very similar orbits. Well, there's actually another pair of orbital, orbital twins, Gong Gong and Eris. Yes, this was the Eris that I was talking about. It's the reason Pluto got demoted. Eris is sort of a white color. It's about the same size as Pluto, but about 30% more massive and twice as far from the sun. It has one moon called Dysnomia. Also called Dysnomia. Here. It's red in color. And... Eris is quite far from the sun, but there's still one more stop left on our journey. And oh boy is it a doozy. I would show you the massive circle, but this has a map again. So, yeah. But all these distances are just averages. Some of the outer objects' orbits are quite eccentric, and Senna especially so. If we adjust for the correct shapes of the orbits, it looks less like this and more like this. Which is why I am standing here today at Senna's Perihelion, the closest it can get to the sun, to tell you about it. 
as you can see, Senna is extremely red. It's the reddest object in the solar system, with the, ex the exception of Mars. And it is the largest object in the solar system past the orbit of Eris. That is, unless you include the mysterious planet 9, which still hasn't been discovered yet, but we're pretty sure it does exist. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. Please like the video. This took so long to make. Anyway, bye.